sofa6.co.uk. Sponsors of The Haze Hour. Hello! Happy Bank Holiday. It's Bank Holiday today. <laughs> I forgot, yes. It is, yes. It's just Keith and me tonight. Kat has something much, much more important that she needs to see to, so she's seen to that, and that's all good, so it's just the night and night, isn't it, Claire? Oh, wow. Well, let's hope we can fill the hour in. Oh, I'm sure we will. I'm well upset, though. Well, why is that? Well, today is Monday, May the 5th. Yes. 2014. It's it's a day later than it should have been. I would I was hoping it was going to be May the 4th, because that's Star Wars, Wars Day. Is it? May the 4th be with you. Oh, God. No? Right. Too early? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How long did it take you to think that up? Oh, I didn't. All right. No, no, I've plagiarised it from loads and loads of other people. So I have. It's what you do. What we do, yes. I have. I'm, I'm watching chat tonight. It's all going to be good. I'm going to get really confused. A um, couple of little housekeeping things. If you were watching the preview, there was a major hiccup because for some strange reason my router decided to restart itself. The YouTube stream is now up. Apparently last night the SVP stream, the one that's on page 41, was playing up. YouTube should be steady. It was last night. It was rock solid. Um, and I've, I've got the YouTube going out at 720p. There's no 1080p on that tonight. We're standardising it on 720p all the way along the lines. But tonight, Keith, there's been changes made in your honour. In my honour? Yes, and I need you to make a decision. Oh. We've got two new sets of titles. Right. And I want to know which one you like best. Right. Is so it the music you're talking about? Yes, I've changed the music, and we've changed the, the graphics as well. All oh, right. And I would, I would like you to have a listen to them. I know I played them out earlier on, but you couldn't hear them because I'd turned the music off, because I wanted to surprise you with this. Right. I, th I think the first one I play will be your favourite. I'm just, uh, yes. And I'll, I'll be asking chat as well to vote. Right. Right. Okay. So one <coughs> will be reminiscent, the other one is new. Are you ready for this? Yes. So I'll play the, the new one in first, and then we'll play the second one in. Right. Is that all right? Yeah. So hello, everybody. Um, welcome to... The Here's Our! That was titles number one. Did you like that? I'm not going to comment later. Like you need to hear the second one. Okay, here's the second lot of titles. There you go, um, the old music on the second one, which I know you loved. So did you prefer the first one? What a choice. What I'll, a bloody choice. I know, it's been bugging me since I did it last week because I think they're both fabulous and I just don't know which one to do for the best. I never thought I'd say this, and I mean, beggars can't be choosers. You're asking me to make a choice. I am. On two horrible pieces of music. Well, I wouldn't say and it was... I, I, nev would, I, I never thought I would say this... But the usual one sounded better than the first one. The usual one sounded better than the first one. I, I would have to say that, and I'm ashamed to say it really, but I mean, you know, what choice have I got? It's either one or the other. And the, and the first one you played was absolutely appalling. Really? Yes. You don't like it? No. Oh, I think You didn't fact. expect me to. Not really. Uh, uh, the, the, the majority are with you. They want second. In other words, the old music 
Igor Maniac says one. First is the best of the two. So what I'll do is I'll stick with two, the old music, and I'll throw one in every so often. Well, why don't you blur them both together? It wouldn't sound any, <laughs> any different, would it? Yeah, you are. They're, diff they're different tempos. They're a completely different mix. And What a fella, eh? What a fella. Yes. Anyway, tonight, tonight, let's, let's, let's blast on with the show. Um, we're going to be looking at this whole nonsense that's been... Well, it's not nonsense. There's been a study printed, uh, or not a study, but there's been some headlines from a study printed in the New York Times. Right. Which apparently is the world's most read newspaper, they say. The Times would beg to differ, obviously. Um, but it is quite influential. And in, in the New York Times, this is Dr. Masia Gonowich has been doing some studies, and he's found that if you turn the... Basically, if you turn the wick up a lot... If you put a lot of power through an ACIG, you get more formaldehyde. That's shortening it right down. All oh, right. Yes. Right? Well, we have a friend, of course, in uh, in Dr. Farsalinos. And, and this is what Dr. Farsalinos has had to say about it. I shall read it out. It says, formaldehyde release in e-cigarette vapour, the New York Times story explained in detail. You've got to remember, Dr. Farsalinos is a scientist, and this is not new to him. He says, a study to be published in nicotine and tobacco research was featured in the New York Times and has generated a lot of interest. The article mentioned that e-cigarette vapour can be the source of carcinogens depending on the heating process. The article is true and expected. We know that thermal degradation can lead to the release of toxic chemicals, and we know that formaldehyde, acetaldehyde and necrolein have been found in vapour. There is nothing new to it. However, this study found that levels may approach those present in tobacco cigarettes. Herein, he presents, with more detail, the results of the study. Researchers used an Ego Twist battery, which is variable voltage, and a top coil clearomizer with unknown <coughs> resistance, thus unknown wattage delivery. At 3.2 and 4 volts, formaldehyde levels were 13 to 807 times lower compared to tobacco cigarettes. At 4.8 volts, formaldehyde levels were increased by up to 200 times and reached two levels similar to tobacco cigarettes. The main criticism to this study is that in Dr. Farsalinos' opinion, it's highly unlikely that a top coil atomizer like the one used in this study would be used at 4.8 volts. At a resistance of 2.2 ohms, that would represent 10.4 watts of energy delivery to the atomizer. He tried 10 watts with an EVIG battery in a Vivinova top coil atomizer, and many vapors were unable to use it due to the dry puff phenomenon. It's very important to examine, examine new generation rebuildable bottom coil atomizers, which are more likely to be used at higher voltages. I am certain that, due to better liquid resupply to the resistance and wick, the results will be much more favourable. Another important point is that, although formaldehyde levels can be similar to tobacco, several other toxic chemicals are completely absent from e-cigarette vapour. For example, Acrolein was completely absent, although they used liquids with glycerol as the main ingredient. In fact, glycerin-based liquids had much lower formaldehyde levels in vapour compared to PG or PGVG mixes, suggesting that they are much safer to use. As a general <coughs> remark, finding few chemicals at similar levels does not mean that the risk is equivalent to tobacco cigarettes. Concerning the remarks about dripping, we should admit that dripping does not allow the user to see how much liquid is present in the atomizer. The same happens with cartomizers, thus clearomizer type atomizers seem to be the future in e-cigarette use, giving consumers the ability to know when they need to resupply the atomizer with liquid. And that's, that's the bottom line on what Dr. Farsalinos has had to say. You look very perplexed. Right, I, I was just trying to take all that in. Right. Um, I mean, he's a very respected... That's the guy that uh, we interviewed, wasn't it? Uh, yes, yes, that's him. About that's two him. or three months ago. Yes, very much so, yes, that's him. What, it, what it's basically saying, in truth, is that there's a difference between bottom coil, top coil, and, and I, I, to be honest, I think he's maybe got the wrong end of the stick a little bit with dripping, um, because... 
and where are we at? Yeah, I, I've now got to chat back. I mean, not that it disappeared, it's just that I'm using the same machine to read both. The fact of the matter is, when it comes to dripping, it's a learned um, process. And it's not right. one that I've learned particularly well. <clears throat> but the bottom line is, you get very, very quickly to know when you need to put more juice in for a given setup. So that you know you can have, let's say you drip six drops of juice in out of yes. your whichever bottle it is. Yes. And you very quickly find out you can have 10 drags or 8 drags or 12 drags or however many drags you like. Right? Yes. And then you know you've got to put some more in. Yes, so you get into a routine. So you get into a routine. It's a lot like having um, something like a TNS, something like, a, well, any tank mod that you can't see the full height yes. of the tank you sharp get to know if you filled it at eight o'clock and you normally need to fill it again at 12 o'clock when it gets to 12 o'clock you fill it again yes and if you normally need to fill it again at four o'clock you fill it again it's a common sense thing and it's here. yes so <coughs> it's you kind of get used to it in the early days though yes a clay remiser is going to help quite enormously and i'm, I'm keeping an eyeball Chat hasn't half slowed down. Oh no, it doesn't. It's me. Yes, John. I'll answer your question in a little while. He's asked whether Dave K was all right because Dave got juice on his fingers last night. He's not dead. Hasn't died. No. He, in, and the reason he hasn't died is because he licked it off. Um, so he's not dead. It's fine. Absolutely fine. No. When it when it comes down to clear is somebody just getting into it. If you well. I'm going to have a look at a couple of new pieces of kit. It's called a Vape Zero One from kick.co.uk. We'll have a look at them after the break. And you'll see they are supplied with a clear remiser that you can see. So beginners are going to be able to see exactly what they're doing. And I do want to have a little bit of a play with all of this and see where we go with it all. Because, again, it, it seems to me that as part of the, uh, the New York Times piece, right in the very last couple of paragraphs, it said that the devices that had been used, and there was 12 of them in total, they're no longer available. They're not on the market anymore. Well, that makes the whole thing... Uh, Does a bit, doesn't it? Irrelevant. Well, you, you, you might well say or that. Or almost. Case. Well, certainly close enough for jazz. Certainly close enough for jazz. I mean, the... the, the um, I suppose the process remains the same. I, to be honest, I don't know what the relevant, what the the, the relative um, popularity is of top coil versus bottom coil. And in fact, I'm going to ask chat. I'm going to ask chat. I'll give you five minutes to vote. Dead easy. If you prefer a top coil atomizer, and I need to show you the difference. If I can, let's go to close you up so that we know. Right on this one, which is on the right of your screen. This is a top coil because the coil is at the top right there's the coil there at the top and here in this aspire it's a bottom coil and you can see that big lump at the bottom the coils at the bottom which do you prefer is it top coil or bottom coil which do you use and it'll be interesting to see how this all comes out top coil or bottom coil and we will we'll get that sorted out before we hit the adverts because I really do want to know so at the moment I'm getting bottom coil bottom Always bottom, 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 bottom coil, bottom, bottom, Sav says top, bottom coil for everybody else, bottom coil, bottoms for me, and obviously this, this applies to uh, clay rows, bottom, Leanna Lawless hates top now, top coil for Moonlit, he likes a bit more heat but he prefers the wicking ability of a bottom coil, more of a bottom fan, I love bottom says Kizzy, steady on there. Steady on. <laughs> bottom, 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 bottom coil. Sometimes use a top coil out here. Clockworks. I'm a bottom man. Bottom, bottom's rule. Bottom coil. Top coil is only for one-off tasting. Daz often gets asked if he goes top or bottom. Bottom, bottom, right. Bottom. We've got its bottom. Everybody, or the majority, the vast majority, seems to prefer bottom coils. Now, I happen to know that Sav sets all of her devices to eight and a half watts that's roughly speaking 3.7 volts at the coil that she coils 
which again is quite interesting mm. to, to bring it into where all of this study is. So that's pretty much standard. Um, Lamental says he likes bottoms but not when they're leaky. Yes. Okay. And Ma it's, it's gone wrong now. It's all gone wrong now. They like male bottoms. Um, Leanna Lawless has male bottoms, <coughs> which is... What? Isn't it interesting how it can suddenly degenerate in... Yes. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's absolutely nothing to do with me, Keith. I mean, it's oh, not... No, no. Not as if you, I would... No, I don't, you haven't, no. I don't guide it towards that. Of course Maybe, you no, don't. Definitely not. Yes. What? The Furious Fury has a nice... But, oh, God. <laughs> Sandy Kelman says she doesn't understand Ohm's law. I think they're talking about bottoms, Sandy. I'm not sure Ohm's <laughs> law applies. Right. Let's have a little bit to think about this. Now that we've got there, we know from what everybody in chat has said that bottom coils appear to be the favoured, yes? Yes. Which means that how I introduced this product that we're going to look at after the break may change slightly. <laughs> Somewhat, because that, uh, that cartomizer that you saw, that top coil cartomizer, came out of the product. Right. But there's all sorts of uh, provisos and hair fours, where fours, white fours, and four to fours, and three b fours, and four b fours. There's all kinds going on. It's all good stuff. Um, and yes, DJ Reptile is absolutely right. DD is a clean minded individual. It's perfectly true. Who said that? DJ Reptile, he said that on. You know fine well, if I sit here and I tell you that I really like to sit and watch a pair of tits swinging, I mean on the feeders in the garden. You know that and you've seen me do it. Yes. Yes, maybe. absolutely. And anybody yes. that would think Always anything. Always being into ornithology. I'm, I'm a great ornithologist. I am a great ornithologist. It's perfectly true. And yet again, it looks as though the damn stream has um, fed up with this. I cannot see what is going on. Is it running or what? I don't know. No. This. So does that mean the whole thing's frozen? Yep. Yes, well, we, YouTube has data apparently, so that's all good. It looks as though we're back. I have... Yeah, this is, this is quite annoying, and I do apologise, people. It does rather look as though uh, my connection is being reset remotely, um, and I need it to stop. Yes. I didn't, I didn't freeze it. We're back now. We're back now. Um, and... DJ Reptile UK said, busy bank holiday, too many on the net, don't they know there is important broadcasting to do? I'm not fiddling with the stream, seriously, I'm not. I'm just not. Um, and I do apologise for it. YouTube, for some, well it's not YouTube, this is, this is at my end, this is my router that keeps on resetting, and I don't know why. The mysteries of technology. Yeah, well I'll be uh, on to BT about that tomorrow. Yes. Okay, um, look, i tell you what, we'll take some adverts and then we'll try and pick this up and make some sense of it when we come back after the adverts. And I'm going to bring in, I'm going to have a look at this kick, uh, vape or worn, that they, they sent up for us to have a look at. And with some juices yeah. of it as well. We'll have a gander out, there's two of them, so we'll play with one each and, right. uh, and see how we get. Um, we'll be back with you in a couple of ticks. Don't go anywhere. Safer6.co.uk sponsors of the Haze Out.
Seat the Six. Sponsors of the Hayes Hour. Yes, during the course of that, I've been trying to uh, find out the cause of the problems, and anyway, it, it, it sort of... But you had, you had a couple of questions, didn't you, Keith? Yes, so that, that, that's a, a top device. Yes, it is. Right. That's an iClear 30. Right. So, presumably, what you were talking about depends on what it's attached to? Yes. Right. Yes, if, you, if, you, um, if you've got a, um, a variable wattage battery or a variable voltage battery, and that could be anything from an Ego Twist up to an MVP, up to all kinds of different devices right. where you can vary the wattage. The voltage, I know some people understand voltage better than they do wattage. I think wattage is easy because it tells you how much heat there is. Yeah. But with something like um, a clearomizer, um, like like the one we got from um, from Jai's the other yes. the other week, right? That's a top coil. You can see where the the wicks are and the coil is here. All right. Yes. Now at the moment, that's running on um, a standard three point six volt battery. That's, that's, the, that's the, the biggest it can get. It would normally run around about 3.2 volts. Right. But if I was to drop this onto something capable of putting a lot more power out, yes. where power is wattage, it's not amperage, right. it's wattage, and it does it by varying the voltage. So if I was to put something that on something that would put 6 volts out, I can guarantee you it would taste horrid because right. it would be too hot. So that's attached to an EVOD? Evod pretty much the same as this. It's 3.2 uh, to 3.6 volts is what you're going to get out of it. Right. So yes, the, the, there is absolutely no danger of a standard setup like that producing these weird levels of anything, really. Anything that's, that's hot caused by pyrolysis or being heated. It's not going to happen from something that's on a standard Ego battery. This is only ever going to apply to anything that's variable voltage or variable wattage. And variable wattage is actually variable voltage controlled by a wattage scale. So, I mean, the devices I've got, none of that would apply, would it, really? Um, just your L rider. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, yes. That, because that you can change the voltage yes. on. But again, if you've got a really low resistance coil in there, it won't put that much of a voltage out. The maximum it'll do is about eight and a half watts. Right. So it's never going to fry anything. Right. Really. It's not going to happen. Um, so what about when you get onto something like your uh, Deluxe? Well, the TNS on the yes. Poldia. I've got a kick in this. Right. Right. Um, and, yeah, that is running at around about 12 watts. Right. Okay. But this is, this is something that I, I actually did want to, to, to cover, and this is very important the measure of heat going into a dripper or any of the the, the the more upmarket tank systems shall we say whether that be a TNS whether it be some kind of Genesis atomizer whether it's a Kraken whether it's a it doesn't matter what it is if you have got adequate juice feeding to that if there's enough liquid so that the coil doesn't exceed a given temperature, excuse me, then you you can't produce these weird and wonderful chemicals. They're not going to happen because the temperature is not high enough. Now, I haven't had time today to find out the actual temperatures at which all of these various different carcinogenic <coughs> chemicals are produced, but I do know that acrolein, for instance, and, and long-term viewers may well remember, as you will, Keith, I had a red temperature gun, an infrared temperature gun that read the temperature of the coils. And yes. we tested them with juice on to see whether they would get hot enough to produce acrolein or acrolein, depending on how you want to uh, pronounce, pronounce it. it. And as long as the coil is wet, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. It's only when there's not enough juice to the coil. Right. And Year, ages ago on one of the shows, I think I made a paper cup. 
and I put it on a little stand above a candle and I lit the candle. Now generally speaking, if you've got a candle flame going onto paper, it burns. Yes. But because there was water in the paper cup, it stops all of the heat from burning the paper, didn't even scorch it. What it does do is it takes that heat out and begins to evaporate. And that's exactly what happens with the juice in your juice, devices. Yeah. Which is why I was saying, when you're talking about a top coil atomizer that maybe doesn't feed as well as it could, it is possible if you were running at a too high a voltage to perhaps produce some of these strange chemicals. Perhaps. Because there are all kinds, I mean, Dr. Farsalinos has, has, uh, has come up with some of the, the possible methodological errors in here. There are others. For instance, I've just been watching you with your eSeq. And if I, if I pick this one up and, and go to Dave Cam, go to Dave Cam, what you see with Keith is it's like this, it's lying down. Then it comes up, goes up, right? Yeah. Then it goes over when it goes in your mouth. And then it gets waved about. Yeah. And it's here, there, and everywhere, right? And then there's another drag. And then it gets laid down, and then it gets stood up, and then there's another drag. And I would venture to suggest that every vapour is exactly the same when you, yeah. you're talking something like this. Perhaps people with, um, with jennies that are notorious leak fests or can be, keep them still. But the rest of us, we're moving about all over the place. They're constantly but you on see, the with move. something like this, it, it, it's so obvious if you juice levels almost down does it you, you you fill it up yeah but the, po the point i was going to make <coughs> is that when when these uh tests are done the um the people that are doing them are used to investigating cigarettes mm. and they're used to using the puff counting machines and the, the, the smoking machines and they're used to investigating cigarettes and they have this strange idea that the the cigarette or e cig to be tested is held firmly like yes. that yes. Or, or like that whatever angle it is the tube is clamped on and it goes <laughs> wait a little while and then goes yes and then wait a little while and goes yeah and but what's not happening is the kind yes. of stuff that happens all the time. It's getting waved about the place. I mean, you're sitting, if you had a cigarette, something like this, or whatever. Mm. And the fact, the fact of the matter is that e-cig usage, vaping, like smoking, is a human behaviour. It is a behaviour. It's not a machine doing it. And I don't think you can test anything about what's coming out of an e-cig when you're clamping it in a bloody machine mm. that's going... <laughs> And then waiting, yes. and the, the damn thing's left still. It's got to be used properly the way it would be used. Anything else is pointless. Absolutely pointless. I'm just looking about to see what's going on. Oh, dearie me. I'm not even sure we've got chat back at the minute. They've gone very quiet. It is going out. Can somebody type something into chat, please, just so that we know, because I'm not seeing anything here. I've got no idea why. Um, right. So, with all of that in mind, and the study, bear in mind this, this is something else that is very, very important. The study that uh, Dr. Gonewich has done is not published until the 15th of May. Now, I'm, I'm making the assumption, probably correctly, that uh, Dr. Farsalinos has seen it. I have not yet. And I won't see it until the 15th of May, but rest assured, I will get a look at it. And then I'll talk about it a bit further on. Um, and indeed, if I can get Dr. Goniewicz and uh, Dr. Farsalinos on together, that would be great. Oh, yes. And then we can talk about it in, in the fullness. Because I am convinced that without the normal movement and shaking that an e-cig gets, you're not going to see anything um, at all. So there we go. I uh, just need to get a message out. Because uh, it looks as though a chat might have gone down. So all we need tonight. Right, um, look, I tell you what, we'll take a quick blast of adverts, and when we've taken the adverts, 
Um, I think I need to uh, refresh that. I do need to refresh that page. That's what it is. And when we've taken the adverts, we'll have a look at this new piece of kit. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. And we're back in the room and I did notice that during the course of the adverts the damn thing decided to drop a little bit again. I do apologise, there is nothing I can do about it at the moment. Um, so there we go uh, and I've got a message, that's all good. Right, right, where were we? Okay, let's let's go to Closely Up Your Cam, which is that one, and zoom it out just a tad. And as we zoom it out, we bring into focus this. This is the kick vip zero one now it that looks that's not how it looks when it comes this is how it looks when it comes and i need to zoom out a little bit further pink one yes yeah, i has a, for some reason everybody <laughs> thinks i like pink and they're not wrong i do so that's what it is now if I, i'll give you the one that i've got open to keith to have a look at um and you can you can copy me it, it comes securely packaged and it's got all of the the, uh, the kind of stuff you would expect to see on the back. Um, it tells you filling the clay remiser, all of that kind of stuff. So let's let's go ahead and have a look at it. Right? And I'll just pull it out so that this looks exactly the same as the one Kate's got. I'll get rid of this plastic because I don't need it. That can go there. And what we what we see is a fairly standard ego style battery and a fairly standard ce4 and the charging lead and the charging lead is pretty much a generic usb charging lead 5 volts input 4.2 volts at 420 milliamp hours out that's what it says on the charger that means it is suitable for ego batteries it's a pretty standard piece of kit not very different from very many others on the back of the packaging, it'll tell you to unscrew the clearmizer tip and all of this, how to operate it, everything there. And it does say Platinum Core Battery Cell Technology. That's what it says. I don't know if you can see that very well. Screw Platinum Core there. Battery Cell Technology, right at the bottom, in that grey bit there. So, right. Let's start by filling it. Do you want to try some uh, roly backy juice, Keith? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and no, I have some here because they sent it up. This is rolling backy juice. It's 24 milligram. I'm pleased to see it's 24 milligram. Um, and people might recognise this. You might recognise the bottle. If you recognise the bottle, do shout out. I'll just undo the lid for you. I'll give you this one over to to have a bit fill. In the meantime, I'll show them. Just getting the plastic end off. <laughs> Will it not come off? Not easy. It's, it's nearly there. There we are. Good, good. 
So you unscrew the mouthpiece on that one. You manage. Yep, you've got it off. That's it. There's the juice. Right. I don't lose that. Ah, yes, I can see why. Because the space round the... There's not a fat lot of room, not is a, there? There isn't, no. While Keith's filling that one, I too will fill on close up you come, and I shall zoom in for this. Zoom in a little bit further. All right, zoom out a little bit. Right, That's I'll it, and we get focus. Okay, so yes, needle tip bottle they supply, which is rather good. And that just goes in on the usual routine, fill it up to a given point. Now, I don't know whether you'll be able to see inside there, but you should be able to see, if it's if we're close enough up, that there's quite quite a good juice flow and that everything is done in silica. There's no metal piece in that centre bit there. The, this, this piece here isn't metal. It's, uh, it's silica. So that's now full and I need to screw the mouthpiece back on. Can anybody how see what I did you, with it? How far have you filled yours? Oh, I always fill it up to the silica. Right. Always. I'm not quite up there. Are you not? Okey dokey. And then it's just really a case of screwing the mouthpiece back on. But it, it doesn't matter that it takes a wee bit of time to find the mouthpiece and what have you. Because you need to let it stand for a little while. You have got to know that the juice has gotten through there. And I haven't tightened it too. It's made uh, contact, has it? It has, yes. Right. Um, it's the usual multiple clicky on. Five, <laughs> I think, to click it on and off. Let's go back to closer that yes. we can. So it is... One, two, three, four, five. There you go. And it flashes itself on. I think I'd, I'd left that one switched on, Keith. Oh, right. As you do. Blue light, blue light. All working, all working. Cooky, cooky. Time to give it a try. Then with this Roland Backy flavour, we'll start with you, Keith. While well, Keith's okay. having a drag... Um, DJ Reptile said, did I mention how much it was? It's 14 quid, 14.95. It's how much it is. How are you finding that, Keith? Well, it's certainly producing immediately. Mm. Effortlessly. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, you, do you think it's a bit warmer than a bottom coil might be? Yes. Yes. My um, my mouthpiece is warming. It's not hot. It's not uncomfortable. Well, mine keeps coming out. Have you screwed it? You've got a good tight. Ah, it, it, yeah, it's tight now. Yes, that... No, that's neat, that. Nice. It is small. Yeah, I like that. Looks okay, doesn't it? Mmm. Lena Marie Popper-Torson has said she prefers bottom coil for that reason. She doesn't like a warm vape. She also thinks she gets more flavour from a bottom coil device. Now, I'm going to agree with you. The flavour out of this isn't bad. I don't think but it's not good and I'm gonna I don't know whether I'm gonna be able to do this I've got to do this off camera otherwise everybody sees how it all works so what can't juice have you got in yours the, the same, same one as you yes the rolling tobacco juice and I'm here to tell you it doesn't taste anything like rolling back not to me at any rate um, and if, if people can see me fiddling about with a remote control that's exactly what I'm doing because I need to get to a particular <coughs> setting that would be it and I need to set that to one and then I shall come down did you hear that beep there we are we've gone into closey uppy mode um, because I want to show everybody where the juice is from and this is going to be again quite interesting if I can get it there 
So here's hyper close up mode. And if I can get this to show, it's on here somewhere. There's an identifier. I just need to catch it in that light, right? There it is. Can you see that? H S. So I already know this juice. H S means Hang Sen. Right. It's a Hang Sen juice. That's a Hang Sen bottle, if nothing else. But that's H S, a Hang Sen juice. So I do actually quite know what this is about, and I should be able to give you the the proper close up now. You can you should be able to make out in this shot that there's a hell of a gap there for the uh, the wicks to go through. An absolute hell of a gap, and you can see all the branding on there. Um, and it's it's cool that the two kick logos line not, up not as they do. I've ever particularly looked, but. Uh, I noticed that's got a, a sell by use by date on. Yes. I've never looked on other bottles. Um, well, it's become part of the, the whole batch thing. It expires the 19th of December 2015, this says. So, how does it deteriorate thereafter? Well, if my experience is anything to go by, it doesn't really. Well, I was just going to say, I haven't seen any deterioration. I know I've got some bottles of juice that I've half used that uh, on that kind of, if it's a sell-by or use-by date, will have expired. And I've never seen any deterioration at all. Yes. Now, funnily enough, um, where's it gone? Natasha Gilbert, for it is she, has asked a very, very pertinent question. And she says, why do all the bottles say toxic when swallowed, but very toxic when in contact with the skin? That's... That's a lovely question. Thank you for that yeah. one. Um, here's the thing. Pure nicotine, right? That's not undiluted nicotine is as toxic when swallowed as it is when it's dripped on the skin for the simple reason that it's absorbed very, very quickly is nicotine, both through the skin and when, well, when it's swallowed, it's yeah. touching skin. It's touching a mucous membrane, so it's swallowed very quickly. So, yes... You would, however, and I need to be able to, I want to be able to uh, illustrate this, and can I hell find a syringe when I need one? Got one here somewhere. If, if you think this show's been done off the cuff, you're right, <laughs> it is. Um, why have I never got a syringe when I want one? Anyway, in order for pure nicotine to kill you, the perceived wisdom as of today as of probably about six months ago when it was first announced, it would need one and a half mils to get somewhere close to it. Right. Right? And if it's diluted, specific, and <coughs> particularly if it was diluted, so it was at 100 milligrams, say, you would be looking at 100 and, what is it? A lot. Ten and a half mils, if it was 100 milligram juice. There isn't any of that around. But the fact of the matter is, there is this strange notion that when diluted it's more easily absorbed through the skin than it would be if it was drunk if you swallowed it for the simple reason that if you do swallow nicotine juice and i'm talking about an appreciable amount you will vomit and how projectile vomiting it'll be like the omen but without the head turning it would be <coughs> all over everywhere. You would toss. You would hurl. You would puke. You would bulk. There would be a technicolor yawn of massive proportions. And therefore, you would get rid of it all. That's your body's defense mechanism working on your behalf. So that's why. If it was on your skin and you didn't notice, then it might stay there. So, I, I tell you what I'll do, just to, just to prove, because Dave Kitson last night, closely up he come coming up, Dave Kitson last night got juice on his skin, like that. Oh! You think I'm going to die? Am I going to die? Yeah. Does anybody think I'm going to die? Hands up in chat if you think I'm going to die. If you do get two or three drops on your skin, and this is 16 milligram, best thing you can do, lick it off. That doesn't taste nice. 
Right. How they think anybody could drink that stuff, and after they've got the first two or three drops on their tongue, how they think a child could drink that and, and actually get enough down them to kill them, I really don't know. Yeah, but doesn't it also bring back to a point you've made many times before, always to buy reputable juices? Oh, God, yes. Yes, without a doubt. I mean, that, 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 that's a factor there, isn't it? I would say it was, yes. It's, it's always a good idea to know, as much as possible, what's in your juice. Yes. It's always a good idea to know that um, the people that are making your juice have got all the controls in place. I mean, I'm, let's, let's be right about it. I've just dripped what it says is 16 milligram juice onto my finger. And then I've licked it off. All right, it's three or four drops. Yeah. There's not, yeah. not enough there to do me particularly any harm. But that is assuming that Hang Sen, who I believe have made this juice, is still sticking to its usual quality standards. And if it is still sticking to its usual <coughs> quality standards, then I know that that is 16 milligram juice, or 15 or 17, but it's close enough to 16 that it's going to satisfy most people, unless, of course, because they are Because there are rogue control. juices on the market, aren't there? Oh, yes. There have been. Yeah. I think it's more important to say there have been. Right. I'm not sure that there are any true rogue juices on the market anymore because people have got the message. Yes. And it may well be that there's some right... There might be some right clippy market on, on the market, but I'm, not, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be in the UK. Mm. Certainly not from reputable vendors. No. And reputable dealers, shall we say. Um, I'd, I'd better check what chat... Salve better defrost the other DD clone. Yes, I'm not. I'm not going to die. I'm just not going to die. Yes, they've called nine 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 for me. I'm dead. Look, Dave, don't die. Oh, this is brilliant. I'm just going to go from yes, hand up here from Rob Tafey, Lovely. Uh, Lena Marie Popatosan said, "Call the paramedics." Gary Dibley says, "If you do die, can I have your camera?" No. Um, Brutalness said R.I.P.D.D. Sandy Kelman went, oh no! Midge Dog laughed. Lena Marie popped a and said, Dave, don't die, Dave. Yes, Neil Roth said, yeah, try eating a ciggy. Vomiting is on the cards. It absolutely is. Paul Mellish ordering the flowers. No, 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 no flowers. If, if, if and when I ever do <coughs> die, I mean, I'm bound to at some point, but if and when I ever do die, don't ever think about spending money on flowers. Spend money on booze and get wrecked in my honour. That's fair, isn't it? Uh, yes. And when yeah, I say wrecked, I mean not just fallen down drunk. I mean completely, utterly gibbering wrecked. Oh. Get properly drunk. No flowers. I want drunk. I've never seen you as a flower person. No. Uh, MG Joe's called 999 for me. Uh, Natasha Gilbert says, so she'll just lick her fingers from now on. There are other, other things to be licked are available. Um, <laughs> should I? <laughs> DD is a zombie, it says here. Uh, where are we at? It's a miracle, says Bath Vapor, because I'm still alive. Uh, reputable juices have nick just as unreputable. Well, yes, they all have nicotine. I know they do. It's whether or not the juices have the amount of nick they say they have. Uh, where are we at? Uh, has Dave died or is it just the stream? Oh, it's the bloody stream again has died <laughs> on its arse. Never mind, there's nothing I can do. Sav better defrost the other DD clone and so on and so on and so on and so on and so forth um leave us your mac dd please uh and and so on and so forth oh yes. very bizarre isn't it really? yes uh, and uh, question is would i be buried with my mods no no i don't think my wife would let that happen somehow i think my wife would make sure that uh, the mods went to a good home there might be a long queue yes where are we at when DD dies, there'll be a DD box instead of a dodo box. <laughs> but I'd be dead as a dodo, so <coughs> no DD, dodo, dodo do, do, wouldn't it? Yeah, it reminds me of that story. The poor guy lying in his hospital bed. Aye. And the doctor comes up and says, do you want the good news or the bad news first? Yeah. Have you heard this? Go on. He says, oh, I better have the bad news first. He said, well, I'm afraid we're going to have to amputate uh, both your legs below the knee. Oh, 
obviously the guy's devastated. I bet he would be. So uh, he said, well, what was the good news? He said, oh, the guy in the next bed wants to buy your slippers. Oh. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Oh. Uh, yes. It's not just me then, is it? No. That doesn't taste like rawly tobacco, but it's a pleasant taste oh, nonetheless. It's not unpleasant. Tell you what we'll do. No, we won't. It wouldn't be fair. Because, look, I mean, as a piece of kit goes, it's all right as a starter kit. Yeah. You know, for somebody, I'd, I'd, to be honest, I'd far rather somebody getting into e cigs bought one of them. Yes. That you have than, than, yep. than one of yep. them, quite honestly. Uh, because I think they'd get better results. Well, I know they'd get better results out of it. And is there a wide variety in, in terms of the juices? It's not massive, no. Uh, there is, there is a, uh, what is it called? Gold and silver. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed There'll to be. There'll be a emulate. menthol one, is there? There is a spearmint <laughs> one. I mean, we've had the menthol in the, in the disposable ones. The packaging's all very good. Um, and I quite yes, like it. The, you know, the zero one is not bad. Mm. It's not bad. The price might be a little bit out there. But yeah. there again, it's not badly finished. It's all nicely, it is nicely. printed up. Um, very lightweight. Yeah. Well, you know me, I like big, heavy, fat yes. batteries. I like to take my chance with a formaldehyde. I'll be, uh, well, let's, let's put it like this. If I'm vaping at 22 watts and there's formaldehyde, formaldehyde coming off it, I'll be well preserved. See, I think what's good about that, it does top pockets and the tip doesn't show. So, do you know what I mean? You can just like that. Well, you can then. What? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. No, 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 it's fine. Fine. Yes, yeah, fine. Oh, that's very kind. I wasn't doing that as a. No, it. it you were, it, sorry, you weren't. It's quite doing... discreet, isn't it? It is. You weren't doing that as a what? As any sort of hint. Oh, right. I was just... Chat. Uh, Everybody that believes Keith, put your hand up. No one is. No. Uh, no. I, I shouldn't have done that. Yes. It just. Uh, They're still talking about me being dead, you know. Surely not. They are. <coughs> I mean, how to make a lad feel good on a bank holiday Monday? Where are we at? Bob says, "DD, when you kick the bucket, that TNS is mine. Ha! <laughs> I'll have worn the bugger out by then. Don't you worry. Another forty years. I plan to sprinkle a fifth of fine scotch over DD's grave." It will be passing through my kidneys first, however. Oh, <laughs> oh God! Yeah. God. Hey, <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. I would have it no other way. My God, yes. Uh, where are we at? Lamental saying I'll take the Land Rover. You won't. The Range Rover may be up for sale. We don't have a Land Rover, do uh, we? What else have we got? Sandy Kelman said, can I have your fancy mod? Which one? There's dozens of them. <laughs> Um, yes, damp, damp kicks, Steffi, she said, but then we cannot take them out of his cold, dead hands. That's the only time you will get them off us, is when you prize them from my cold, dead hands. Max Drum says, Bob, I'll flip you for it. And uh, Bob says, not a chance, Max, it's mine, I tell you. Mind? I think that's because he's trying. You see, they're all squabbling over your possessions. I know. That's before I've uh, even <coughs> gone. Exactly. But, um, um, Midge Dog has said, he'll outlive us all, Bob. No chance of any mods or that he's being bequeathed. That's correct. Because you know what they say? They say you cannot take it with you. That's right. Well, if you cannot take it with you, I'm not bloody going. Well, if they put all those in your box, they wouldn't be able to bloody lift it, would they? Um, that's a moot point. We carried me Uncle Harry and he was 34 stone. And I'm not was that he? heavy yet. No, no, I was on about the devices, not you. Well, I don't know, but if well, they're going to yeah. be in the box with us, well, yes. I haven't got 14 stone of mods yet. They're not doing, far short. They don't wait, get it, me. It's miles short. <laughs> Take the batteries out of them anyway. Of course. But <laughs> Neil Ruff said, that's the truth. I would love DD's Poldiac and whistling TNS, says Leanna Lawless. I'm sure you would, Leanna. <laughs> Here's a clue for you. You're not bloody getting it! So, would you want that background music playing at the, the ceremony? Both of them. 
Yes. Both the first and the second. But I want John playing the old theme tune, the 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 iconic theme tune. I want John playing that live with his band. Mind, he'll be 123 by then and all. Yes, I, I, it, it's true. Bob's typed into chat that DD wants my Hellfire Mini if he dies before me. And that we've got that packed. And so what you've said is right, Bob. If I'm getting the Hellfire, if you go before me, you can have the TNS if I go before you. That's fair, isn't it? If we both go together, Keith's going to be jumping for joy. God. This yes, is bad, isn't come, it? come and sort of raid the place. Yeah. You can have what you like if I go before you. Vats full of juice. Yes. <laughs> Fresh batteries. I need one. In the whistling TNS. Hey, it's been it's been a queer day today, hasn't it? Been Do you No. Mean? Yes. Midge Dog said to Bob that he might as well post it now. Because he's sorry to say Northern is a We are. <laughs> but, the, but the firm stuff. Hey, you'll be a happy bunny mind. Apparently, Sunderland's staying up. Not quite. Really? Not quite. I was misinformed by my informant then. Uh, we'll know that possibly on Wednesday. It's either Sunderland or Norwich that'll go down, but Sunderland have a game in hand. Uh, this is the face of a man that really yeah. isn't interesting. Really interesting. Well, I, you I'm asked. Just, I know. Uh, I just, I was just trying to be polite, Keith. Uh, all right. By the way, have you been sat out in the sun? Not particularly. Because you don't have to look tanned the night. Not like me, pasty faced. Motel tan, that's me. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, yes. And Bath Vapor is right. Kick don't have any B&M shops, but they do have a pretty website. It's true. They might have B&M shops a little bit further down the road. I really, really don't. Sav has... This is, do you know something, this is quite upsetting, it's, well it's upsettling, upsettling, upskittling, it's a bit disconcerting, right, yeah. because Sav's saying that the Range Rover is hers, because she lives close. All oh, right. I, I live even closer. That's true. I, I would venture to suggest that Jill lives even closer still, <laughs> and there might be something to be said. I'm just pointing that out, I am a married, very, very happily married man. I have had, in fact, 35 years of happy marriage. And that's not bad out of 36. <laughs> yes. Yeah, just as well I'm buggering off for three days tomorrow. Yes. And at least you have a last smoke in the crematorium, as Alan Fletcher said. Yes. That's mostly the box. If they put the box in, I don't believe they do. Really? You think they recycle them? I take all your jewellery off. Pull any, go any gold teeth you've got. Yes, but then they have a magnet to break through the ashes with a very strong magnet to take out any metals that are being missed. You might have metal inside you. It's all so been use this out. magnet. Yeah. All my oh, well, no, because all the, all the metal I had inside is was titanium. I am a bionic man. They said we can rebuild them. It's a bit like a bloody Meccano apart, we lost some bits here, but never mind. Hey, the time has yes. come it's the time has come for us to go and so we say farewell. Hello. Um it's been it's been different this week, hasn't it? I've missed Chris. Yes. I've missed yes, Chris. Yes, I have missed her. Um and I'm gonna say and, and this is from the heart of hope everything gets sorted out. Uh Chris. Uh, I've missed you, we've both missed you, everybody's missed you. Um and thinking of you. There you go. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. I've got to say thank you to Keith for coming around on a bank holiday a double time tonight, you know, so. Is it? Oh, is it really? Aye. That's a bonus. It certainly is, lad. <laughs> yes. Twice now, it's now, though. Look forward to me brown envelope. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't, I, I don't do things like brown envelopes. No. You've got an yeah. e-cig. Of course I have. You've got the charger. Yes. Aye. That's ample payment. Oh, what? Absolutely right. Um... Just a quick reminder, I won't be with you on Thursday night hosting VT Talk because I'll be in Switzerland at the International Harm Reduction Association conference. Probably belching into a microphone like I just did there. If the nicotine hasn't taken effect. Oh, well, I'm not dead yet. If I'm not dead <laughs> no, yet, I'm no. not going to. Um, so <coughs> hopefully, if, if, if I can, if I can get signal, I'll try and report back on Thursday night 
from Switzerland and I won't be doing VT Talk next week either because I'll be in London at the Public Health England uh, um, conference uh, where we're, we're speaking down there as well so that'll, that'll all be good but I will be back next week for the Here's Hour will you? Yes, see Great. no reason why not we'll be back next week for that don't forget tomorrow night we've got Mark Van Basten not with Tin Your Tip but with Vapersine on Wednesday night, oh sorry, and after Mark O, quarter to ten, for our German language viewers, German language speakers, uh, DE talk, you know what it is. Nicotine and cider is great, lad. <laughs> Feeling quite giddy, it's good. Um, where was I? Yes. It's not Dick and cider. It's a nut. No. Jill was really disappointed. Oh, God, it's just sorry, sorry. Oh, when it gets uh, to this time of night, she yeah. really does like some Dick and cider. She loves Dick Insider. Dick Insider is very good. All the ladies love it. Anyway, yes, where was I? Yes, so, so tomorrow night, Mark Will Van Basten and DE Talk. Um, they're the same in DE Talk. Wednesday night, Tin Your Tip. We were promised blood last week and all we got was a plaster. I hope it's going to be better than that. Want real proper blood this week, lads. Mark Jones is there. He'll let me know where it's going to happen. That'll all be good. Thursday night, I think... I'm not sure. The schedule doesn't go that far. Probably be a team talk. Something will be happening, almost certainly. And then Sunday, Dave Kitson will be back with Dave's Tackle Box. I may or may not, I won't, actually probably won't be on Dave's Tackle Box on Sunday coming because I've got lots of stuff I've got to be doing. Um, RY4 Radio is on every night. It's actually on now. They are spinning the wheels of steel and playing music that you would love, Keith, on RY4 Radio. Don't forget to tune in on that. All that remains for us to do is to say thank you very much indeed for watching. Yes. Right. Are you going to do this with me? So it's vape on, vape on, vape hard, vape hard, and don't, don't let, let, let the bastards, bastards grind, you, grind down. you down. There you go. Keith said it. That's the way it ought to be. Until we see you next time from all of us here, and that includes the... Uh, the team behind the scenes who have been holding my hands all the way through this because I'm useless at it. Um, thanks to them as well. Until we see you next time, take care of one another. Be good if you can, be naughty if you can, be good, and be absolutely disgustingly badly behaved if you're out like me. See you next time. Good take night. Care. Good, good night. night.